Epicurus, an eminent philosopher hailing from ancient Greece, was the trailblazer of Epicureanism, a principled philosophy that championed the pursuit of life's simple pleasures and the cultivation of authentic friendships. To facilitate the spread of his doctrine, Epicurus established his own school of thought in Athens, which thrived for centuries, persevering even beyond the 4th century AD. Unfortunately, as with many scholars of his time, only a scant few of his compositions have persevered through the ages. While it is believed that Epicurus authored more than 300 works during his lifetime, the majority of his literary legacy has been lost to the sands of time. Thus, we are left with only fragments of his philosophy and letters, alongside extensive accounts and writings from his followers and peers. The Epicurean ethos prioritizes the pursuit of happiness, eudaimonia, and advocates for living a placid existence free from agony. Epicurus maintained that the best approach to delve into Epicureanism was within the confines of a tight-knit community of friends. With this precept in mind, what then can Epicurus teach us about family dynamics, matrimony, and child-rearing? As with many things in life, the answers to these questions are rarely black and white. So let's explore Epicurus' life and background, family, origins, and early years. Born on the island of Samos, located in the eastern Aegean Sea, Epicurus hailed from a family of Athenian military settlers. His father was a school teacher, and his mother likely kept the home fires burning. Epicurus himself was a precocious youngster as he began his philosophical studies at the tender age of 14. It all began when a teacher of his failed to explicate the concept of chaos in the works of the ancient Greek poet Hesiod. From there, Epicurus ventured to the Ionian city of Teos, where he studied under the tutelage of the esteemed philosopher Nasophanes for three years. This is of note because Nasophanes was a pupil of the renowned atomist thinker Democritus, who influenced Epicurus' own theories on atomism. At the age of 18, Epicurus made his way to Athens to complete his mandatory two-year military training. Following this, he reunited with his parents in Colophon, an ancient Ionian city, where they had been exiled after Athens lost control of Samos to Macedonia in the Lamian War. Following this tumultuous period, little is known about Epicurus' whereabouts for over a decade, save for a lone surviving letter to his mother, which was later discovered by one of his followers. Tracing the history of the Epicurean community in Athens, in 306 BC the great philosopher Epicurus made his triumphant return to the major coastal city, accompanied by a group of loyal followers. They established a school, which they called Hokipos, or the Garden. Now this was no small feat. At that time, Athens was dominated by the prestigious Academy of Plato and the Lyceum of Aristotle. These schools were highly competitive, attracting only the most gifted of minds, and they placed great emphasis on applying philosophy to the public sphere. But Epicurus was not one to shy away from a challenge. He saw the value of community and friendship in his philosophy of Epicureanism and was determined to create something new and lasting in Greece. Unlike the other schools, he advised his followers to steer clear of politics and public life. The garden was also unique in that it accepted women and slaves. The community lived modestly, subsisting on water and barley bread. Epicurus himself was a strong advocate of frugality and simplicity. It's worth noting that, unlike some biased accounts from the Stoics, there is no concrete evidence of any kind of misconduct occurring in the garden. There were occasional romantic relationships between disciples, but this was far from the debauchery that some of Epicurus' detractors claimed. Sadly, Epicurus passed away at the age of 72 from prostatitis, but in his will he left the house, garden, and funds from Hokepos to his school's trustees. He also set aside some money to honor his deceased parents and requested that someone oversee the marriage of his follower, Metrodorus' daughter to an Athenian philosopher. Epicurus' legacy endures to this day, and his philosophy of friendship, community, and simplicity remains as relevant now as it was over 2,000 years ago. 
So now let's talk about the role of family and friends in shaping human history. It's intriguing to ponder why Epicurus placed such great importance on friendship and social bonds over politics and public life. Some academics suggest that the answer lies in the writings of his follower, Lucretius, particularly in his epic poem, On the Nature of Things. Experts believe that Lucretius was essentially reiterating much of what Epicurus had already penned in his own treatise, On Nature. Therefore, it's an excellent place to start when trying to gain insight into Epicurean philosophy. Epicurus contended that in the beginning, humans were solitary creatures, lacking social structures, and reproducing in a haphazard manner. The long-term prospects for human survival under such conditions seemed bleak, to say the least. However, Epicurus argued that the importance of family, as a significant factor, led humans to develop stronger bonds and a more cohesive community, enabling them to survive. As humans began to form families, they became more protective of each other creating stronger social bonds that allowed them to form groups capable of warning each other of natural dangers such as fires and wild animals. This led to the development of names for one another and their surroundings, eventually giving rise to the creation of cities, nations, and states, all of which further strengthened bonds of friendship and alliances that ensured long-term human survival. Evidently, Epicurus believed that the emergence of the family played an incredibly vital role in the development of contemporary society. Families and friends transformed humans from animalistic beings struggling to survive on their own and incapable of proper communication into an organized and protective species capable of existing in large-scale communities. So now let's explore Epicurus' perspective on marriage. The ancient Greeks and Romans had a tumultuous relationship with marriage, my friends. The great philosopher Socrates, for example, was famously married to the fiery Xanthip, and together they produced three sons. But some of Socrates' contemporaries, such as Plato, favored the idea of sharing wives, while others opposed the institution of marriage entirely. In the time of Epicurus, Marriage was primarily concerned with child-rearing and had little to do with true love. This was a common theme in ancient Greece, where other philosophers had already noted the distinction between using mistresses for sexual pleasure and wives for producing children. While some believe that Epicurus was opposed to marriage altogether, others argue that his devoted follower Lucretius presented a very different perspective on the matter. Lucretius argued that children are the very foundation of society, and that becoming a parent is a noble endeavor so long as one is honest about their desires and expectations. Nevertheless, Epicurus himself never married, which leads us to question whether he was following his own advice on the matter. Indeed, attempts to determine Epicurus' exact position on marriage have been hindered by the loss of much of his writing, and scholars remain divided on the subject to this day. Now we arrive at the last part, examining Epicurus' legacy and caring for his friends and disciples. Before passing away, Epicurus was meticulous in arranging his affairs in order. His noteworthy last will and testament portrays his solicitude for his friends at the garden. It also served as an exemplary model to his students of how to utilize a will to protect the well-being of those you love. Moreover, through his instructions for Metrodorus' daughter, Epicurus revealed his concern for the surviving family members of his deceased disciples. In his will, Epicurus iterated several times that his provisions for Metrodorus' daughter should only be fulfilled as long as she behaved properly and ethically. This has caused some scholars to suggest that Epicurus was deeply invested in the promotion of social harmony especially within the Epicurean community that he left behind. If this was of any value to you, leave a like, comment, and please consider subscribing to maximize your life's channel.